Mayor Margaret Court, and welcome to Service Georgina. Our shows are geared to bring you information about the departments, facilities, and programs that are offered here at the town of Georgina. Today, we're talking with uh, staff that uh, operate two of the most popular uh, facilities that we have, the uh, Leisure Pool in Sutton and the, uh, the Rock. And I'm joined today with Ashley Murdoch, who's the aquatics programmer for the Leisure Pool, and Miranda Link, who's, this is a, one of these long titles, mm -hmm. <laughs> recreation <laughs> programmer, challenge course, and outdoor education. Yes. So welcome to you both for coming today. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. us. Now we're going to have a dialogue back and forth, but we're going to start first with, uh, with the pool and sort of give us an overview of what the activities are that uh, people can expect to see at uh, the Leisure Pool. Uh, well, aside from swimming lessons and things like that, we have a variety of fitness programs uh, at the pool. Uh, Aquafit, we have lane swims, uh, diaper fit for new moms and babies. Uh, we also have parent and tot swims and uh, public swims for families to come and swim together. I know the aqua fitness is one of my uh, my favorite ones, and yes, I, I try to get there <laughs> not as regularly as I probably should. Mm -hmm. But it's good to uh, to have those, and they are throughout. Like there's a, a program schedule, so while some things aren't offered every day, you can see when the when the programs are through the uh, the recreation guide or online. Yeah, we have our uh, drop-in schedule. Uh, it's online at georgina.ca as well as our program guide. But uh, yeah, Monday through Friday we have uh, various. Um, aquafit classes that are running so some are deep ends some are um, combo classes and things like that and there's some of the evenings I, I try to get to some of those at, uh, at times too yes now do we have any special programs coming up for over in uh, March break we do uh, so along with our drop-in program which stays the same throughout the week uh, we also have additional public swims throughout the week so we have at least one to two public swims um, either in the afternoon or evenings during March break because I know those are really popular because not everybody goes away during March break and the, the kids are bored so you try to get, yeah. to, get them out <laughs> And I know we try to have some you know, special bit of fun at uh, at times with I think the Easter egg hunt you have at times and uh, yes we have uh, we have a lot of fun different um, public swims that we have uh, we do try and theme our events when we can um, we have our um, Valentine's Day swim coming up as well um, in the winter so um, where you can bring somebody that comes in for free and you can bring your sweetheart for free I think Mother's Day and Father's Day we have uh, events so there's always people need to just uh, check out our, our website at georgina.ca and mm -hmm. look at uh, what's what's coming up now some people want to know if there's any volunteer opportunities at the pool and I was surprised to learn of the the volunteer opportunities I wasn't aware of it. yeah we actually we have a great volunteer program um, running at the pool so a lot of the younger uh, youth that need their high school hours and things like that they can come and volunteer they work alongside our instructors um, so while they're in the water they're working with the the children and our instructors and kind of learning how our programs run that's a great um, idea you know they can see if it's what they want to get into you can see what they're like uh, working with the kids. So yeah, it's nice to get to know their personalities, especially um, so that it kind of leads them into our leadership courses and potentially, you know, maybe down the road working for us. <laughs> well, and you know, it's a great skill to, to have mm -hmm. as a, a student going off to university. It, it looks good on your resume as well as those potential part-time jobs while, uh, while you're away. So that's, that's a, great, uh, a great way to get that that skill and, and get involved with the town at the same yeah. time. We have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun at the pool. I know. When I, when I go to the pool, it, uh, it, it does seem like a lot of fun. And, and certainly the uh, the adults that I participate with at the Aqua Fitness are, are really keen to, it's, it's quite a, a group that go there on a, on a regular basis. Some don't miss a week and mm -hmm. some are there, you know, two and three times during the, the week. So it's, it's nice to, to see it uh, well used. Yeah. Now we'll go to talk a little bit about The Rock. Tell us yes. a little history of when The Rock opened and what activities we have. Yes. Uh, so the activities that we have there, of course, we have our tubing, which is our main activity. Oh, yeah. yeah. Lots we of fun. We offer skiing and snowboarding. We have an alpine hill. We also have a terrain park and we also offer free tobogganing and free skating. Uh, and new this year, we have our Cub Club. I think we have Rocky here somewhere. I think I saw him sneak in <laughs> earlier. There he is. Hi, Rocky. <laughs> And Rocky's holding one of the boards that um, people can come to the ticket office. They can pick it up, borrow it for absolutely for free, free. For okay. free, yeah. And they can come and pull their young children around. So about one years old, all the way until six, uh, can ride these boards. And we can, you know, parents can pull them around the little park. So it's a great way for them to see if, if a, if the child likes it, is enjoying yeah. it, and mm -hmm. yeah. introduce them to it. Definitely. And then new this year, we also have Cub Club lessons. Oh, um, the lessons. Does Rocky give the lessons. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that would be nice. Nice would and be. warm, anyways. Um, 
Um, so the Cub Club lessons would be by a certified instructor, um, and it would be on an industry standard board, so a wax board with boots and bindings. Oh, wow. Um, and the instructor will give them a little bit more information and pull them around the Cub Club park. Great. Well, yeah. thanks for coming, Rocky. <laughs> Take care. Get back to the hill now. <laughs> So what are the hours? I know that's always a concern from people. They want to know when's it open, mm -hmm. so when can I go, that type of yeah, thing. Yeah, so obviously every year our goal is you know Christmas break to March break, um, but we are open Wednesday to Sunday. So Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we're open 4.30 until 9. Mm -hmm. Saturday is our biggest day. We're open from 10 until 9. And then I've been there on some Saturdays, yeah. and it's packed. Yeah, it definitely can get really busy, especially you know in the mid-afternoon time. It's funny to see that you know, when we use the chalet for some of our other events, like the Award of Merit and some of the other meetings and it's you know you see it for weddings all set up mm -hmm. and then you see it in the winter time and it becomes this yes hive of, of uh, you know kids and snowboards mm -hmm. and boots and bindings and all yeah. sorts of things so it's it's great to uh, to see that that facility be used yeah. uh, for those different seasons mm -hmm. now cost wise I know we've uh, time has run out obviously for the uh, early bird specials but mm -hmm. we still have uh, uh, the ability for people to uh, buy passes and maybe mm -hmm. explain how they can do that. Yeah, for sure. So we do, um, the, the two-hour tube is the most, probably the most popular. It's two, uh, two hours of tubing for $20. Also, residents of Georgina, they also get a 20% discount, which is a nice little bonus right. for them. Right, that's perfect. Um, but we also do single rides. We do six rides. We also do, you know, a, a four-hour tube. And then on Saturdays and Sundays, if, you're, uh, if you arrive before 11, you can get three hours for the same price as two. So it's a little bit of an early bird special well, for those people. People who get up a little extra, extra early, early, early on the weekends, yeah. To beat the rush to uh, to the rock. So mm -hmm. great. We'll come back to you in a minute. But uh, going back to Ashley, um, as we all know, we're working on a multi-use recreational facility that would include uh, uh, another pool. And I know. Um, some parents are concerned even right now without that pool about swimming lessons and them getting booked up. Maybe tell us a little bit about how, you know, we try to. <laughs> Parsing out the uh, the lessons that we have now and when people register, what we do. So ideally, we will have a new pool. Um, <laughs> that's what we're working on. Uh, but w when it comes to swimming lessons, I know uh, through winter registration, going into spring registration um, in March, that they do book up really quick. We do our best to make sure that there are enough lessons that are running. Um, we've kind of programmed every inch of the pool possible, um, but. If you aren't able to get into a class, we do have wait lists. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and we are constantly monitoring them. Um, our goal is to accommodate everybody on the wait list to make sure that we can provide um, swimming lessons because that's our goal. We want to mm -hmm. make sure that you know all the children and adults know how to swim. Mm -hmm. um, but we Being just want to make lake, sure that's important. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we just want to make sure that it's done in a safe manner. So we don't. We want to make sure that when we do provide those lessons, that there is enough space in the pool and it's at the right. You know spot in the pool for height for, and, for height like and everything and yeah. just mentioning we you know we do have Lake Simcoe we do still offer uh, um, lakefront swimming lessons yes and I'm actually very excited this summer we've revamped them um, a little bit for the summer so that uh, they're they're new it's going to make it easier for parents that have more than one child um, so this way they can register for a half an hour block for preschool and a half an hour block for oh, swim kids good. so that the kids can be back and forth um, within the hour and the parents can kind of it's a one-stop shop they can kind of show up and within an hour have uh, all of their kids, kids in lessons. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Because with different age ranges, you don't want to be sitting there waiting with one and then have to wait for a couple no. hours. And to, Dallas Isle is so beautiful. Oh, it's lovely. So, yeah. I mean, I know being up at the cottage and being at beaches in the summer is the best place to be. So. It is, mm -hmm. and you do want to have that mm -hmm. exposure to that, that beach front water swimming situation. Because it is very different than being mm -hmm. in a pool that's got the the size within easy reach and and it's just it's different for some kids that they've never been yeah. into a lake before mm -hmm. it's it's important to have that exposure mm -hmm. now going back to mentioning about uh, you know a, a new pool in in the Merck what's the plans and I with the uh, the Sutton pool what are you working on for when the new pool comes on board whenever that does happen um, what's the plans for Sutton so I love the Sutton Pool, um, obviously, oh, so do I. you I've know, been, um, been there many times. so our program would definitely um, incorporate both pools, so having different programming at both pools, um, and it would just, it would be able, we would be able to offer more swimming lessons, more public swims, rentals, things like that, yeah. so uh, we're definitely in the works to make sure that both pools would be, you know, offering a variety of different programs, and so that we could, again, offer more programs to the residents and make sure that everybody is in swimming lessons and public swims and 
fitness. Fitness, it's, all, it's mm -hmm. all good. We talked a little earlier about uh, the volunteer positions, but how does somebody become a lifeguard? What's the, the stages that somebody has to go through to, to get that? So it's definitely a conversation I have with a lot of the parents. It does become confusing. I know <laughs> um, it is overwhelming to look at, but there is um, a very detailed uh, step our process that we have um, with our leadership courses, which um, is online. We do have it online at georgina.ca. Uh, but I mean, feel free, give us a call. All of our receptionists there can kind of walk you through the starter levels, whether it's, you know, bronze medallion, all the way to lifeguarding and instructional. So there's really only four courses that they need, but it's oh, really? overwhelming to look at. Well, it is. And, and for some kids, it's it's something they want to do. Sometimes it's the parents want them to, mm -hmm. to do it as well. But it is a great skill to have. And as I mentioned earlier, as you go off to university, it's a great uh, a great thing to have on your resume and, yeah. and to be able to... Uh, to work at a, another facility someplace uh, someplace else. So. Well, the new um, Red Cross water safety instructor course is really nice because there's an online component. Oh, that's good. So they, the students can actually, we give them a package and they go home and they do some of their modules there and then they come back to the classroom setting. So it's kind of, it's new. A lot of the kids are liking it because they can access it online. Oh, and that's good. Yeah, so it's really, it's exciting. Um, but yeah, it can be overwhelming, I think, yeah. for parents looking at it. but. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about, Miranda, about uh, the uh, lessons at uh, The Rock. Mm -hmm. We touched a little bit about the, uh, the cub snowboarding, but what other lessons are there available? Yeah, so we have, um, we have our skiing and snowboarding lessons. So any lesson could be a semi-private, could be a full private. We also do group lessons. Uh, so the private lessons are four weeks. So two, we do two sessions a January session for four weeks and then a February session again for another four weeks. Um, but the group lessons, they run eight weeks consecutively. So we have, you know, a variety of different ages all the way, you know, from walking until six, three to six, and then all the way up until adults. So, so there's hope for me yet? I yeah, there is. Yeah. How to snowboard? A hundred percent. We can I'll get you up there. I have to think about that. I don't yeah. know. I tried cross-country skiing once, mm -hmm. and, I, and I say that once because... Uh, it wasn't a pretty experience. Yeah. I, I think some people are not meant to have wooden sticks. It can be tough to for sure. Feet and, yeah. and actually, at that time, it was really icy too. Mm -hmm. So I think that was uh, part of my problem. And when I fell, it, it wasn't. Wasn't yeah, nice. and it's, yeah. sometimes it's difficult to move them around. Oh. But I feel like going downhill is a little bit easier. You yeah. have, you know, gravity on your side. Yeah, you do. But, <laughs> you're going but that can be way. a little bit dangerous, too. Yeah. So, uh, but uh, we're going to take a, a quick break right now, mm -hmm. and then we're going to come back. We've still got lots more questions uh, for Ashley and, and for Miranda. So join us uh, when we come back from after our break, and we'll continue the discussion about the pool and about the rock. We'll see you in a few minutes. Thanks for joining us uh, coming back after our break. I still have from the pool, I've got Ashley uh, Murdoch and I've got Miranda Link from, from The Rock. And we've been talking about uh, the uh, different programs and services offered by, uh, by those two facilities. Um, tell us a little bit more, um, Miranda, about the, the, the Rock in terms of uh, school groups coming and, and uh, rentals, that type of mm -hmm, thing. Of course. Uh, so we're lucky enough to um, be able to offer, you know, opportunities and experiences for local schools or schools in, you know, York Region to come and visit us during the week. So we're open Wednesday to Thursday for that. Uh, and schools can book in a variety of different times, whatever works best for their so school. So they can book like a, just a few hours or mm -hmm. a full afternoon or day? Yeah, so there's two options you can do a half day or a full day and those activities are tubing tobogganing and then skating so we provide everything except for the skates um, but we do provide you know toboggans and helmets oh, that's good. we have the cafeteria open if right. they like um, we also have a lunch option which they can choose from so then they can have the oh, whole package they can package. have the whole package yep. or some of them just want to bring their their bag lunches right. they can yep. they can do that as well yeah and so buy their chocolate bars and whatnot <laughs> well, well, the best part that's yeah. right. <laughs> that's <laughs> my life, really I remember is. skating we used to do we used to do a valentine skate and mm -hmm. I remember going to the arena and getting the the caramel 
little um, sponge toffee. That oh, okay, yes. Sponge toffee. That was I love sponge thing. toffee. Yeah. So we do programs as well, though, on uh, PA days as yes. well. Yes. So the Rock is open for York Region District School Board PA days. So if you have a PA day, you know the kids are more than welcome to come over, um, and we're usually open um, at 10 a.m. for the, on those days. Yeah. Same mm -hmm. for Family Day. We're open uh, mm -hmm. that day uh, as well. Yes. Tell us a little bit about uh, the York Region Transit and how that works into uh, to the uh, mm -hmm. the Rock. Yeah. So um, we're fortunate enough to have the YRT come right to the Rock. So um, if you're a frequent user or if you have a season's pass, you actually have that included. Um, with your seasons pass as a free, you know, free That's transportation nice. to and from the rock, which is really great. What about great. your snowboard? Are they let you bring your snowboard? Yes, they do. Yeah, they have a special <laughs> spot that you can put it so that so you don't have to worry about that. That's good. Mm -hmm. And I know I've seen in the past um, groups that will rent the the rock, or mm -hmm. you know, for. Uh, a family event or for a charitable event. How does that uh, How does that work? Yeah, so there's kind of two avenues you can go down. You can uh, definitely do a private booking and we, you know, tell people to contact the recreation department for those kinds of details. But usually for any group over 20, so if you have, you know, a community group, you have a sports team, or just a bunch of girls that you want to get together, yeah. you know, come over um, and you can get a discount on the lift tickets if you have over 20 people. Oh, okay, yeah, that's so great. You just come to the ticket office, you know, tell us who you are, where you're from, um, and then how many people you you have and then we'll go ahead and, and get you all set, set up. Now we talked a little earlier about uh, lessons. Mm -hmm. What do, does a person need to, to bring or, or provide when they sign up for the, the mm -hmm. lessons? Yeah, so for the regular lessons, um, you need to have definitely a helmet is, is a number one, right. and then industry standard equipment. So for snowboarding, it's a board, boots, um, and then you know bindings. And for skis, you know very similar skis, bindings, and boots. Um, but you want something with a, a wax bottom mm -hmm. with metal edges, something that's um, you know what we would consider industry standard. Yeah. So I know uh, in the fall we often have the uh, ski and swap and sell so that's mm -hmm. always a, a popular event so people can get uh Equipment at a at mm -hmm. a fairly reasonable yeah yeah used price. equipment because you know sometimes well kids grow of course over yeah. you know every <laughs> season I'm sure you know you're going up a size but it's always great if you're not sure if you're new to the sport then you can pick up something that's yeah. a little bit more affordable affordable if yeah. you're not sure that the child's going to enjoy you know snowboarding yeah. or skiing so mm -hmm. now tell me about some of the events that we have mm -hmm. at uh, at the Rock because certainly yeah. the the winter season is full of uh, events and we've got some coming yeah. up shortly yeah tons of events the Rock the Rock is a really great host for a lot of the events that we run all season the winter Right. of course being my favorite but we <laughs> offer um, Snowfest which is always the first weekend in February I believe it's on the third we have tons of uh, you know events going on within that so you know you get tons of winter activities you get treats you get snacks you know pretty much anything under the sun you can think of happens on that day we also do cardboard toboggan races which is a fairly that's, new but yeah. very exciting event I've that we seen offer that. that's, that's <laughs> a lot of fun with yeah. the snow fest the the event itself is free but if somebody wants to use the the tube and terrain hill there's mm -hmm. still the the cost involved yeah with it. the fees still apply for all of the activities um, on the hills so the tubing skiing and snowboarding but yeah the event itself completely yeah. free and, and usually the free hot dogs like everything is free because being such a, a big uh, uh, area through the rock we mm -hmm. can have events spread out all along the the parkway down mm -hmm. to the the pioneer village and people can sort of pick and choose that they want to listen to some music mm -hmm. if they want to go tubing if they want to you know do the uh, outdoor uh, rink which mm -hmm. is which is a great uh, a great thing to get uh, people this is canada and skiing yeah. outside mm -hmm. is is you know part yeah. of our dna yeah so it's in our blood for yeah. sure it's, yeah. It's, yeah it's a great opportunity mm -hmm. and we have uh, you mentioned the carbo race what else do we have that yeah. comes up uh, yeah so we rock? have the slope style which is a ski and snow board contest that happens and that's always the first weekend in March and so you know kids that have been kind of working hard in the train park all year they can oh, come I, show us their skills I've seen some of them mm -hmm. and it's amazing mm -hmm. what some of the yes kids you were can, a judge yeah, on here yeah, yeah. 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 like wow it's, so it's, we always have try to have really great prizes we have good music and it's just kind of you know a non-competitive competition just to come right. out and just you know kind of show your stuff and now I know we've had the puddle jump uh, mm -hmm. when we're able to depending on the season it mm -hmm. depends on how things sort of and if we're able to, to build that in, but tell us a little yeah. bit about the puddle jump. Yeah, the puddle jump is is pretty cool. It's definitely a fa you know a favorite, especially oh, yeah. when we're so able fun. to. Yeah, so fun. <laughs> oh, so, so much fun. Yeah, so laugh. you can either tube, ski, or board. We usually set up you know one good lane. You know, push right. all the snow that we have left into one good lane. Um, and people can kind of just you know straight bomb it right from the top of the hill, kind of, and see if they can skip themselves over the water. So some make it over, and yeah, some, some aren't so lucky. Don't. <laughs> yeah, and some aren't so graceful when they when they don't make it That's over. That's true. Yeah. But it's it's a, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. 
Now, Ashley, you were telling me a bit about uh, a new program at the uh, the pool, the sensory adaptive uh, program. Maybe you can tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so we've always had um, adapted lessons for any children or youth uh, with exceptionalities. Uh, but the one thing that we were finding was, depending on what else was going on in the pool, if there was other preschool lessons or swim kids, um, any children that had some sensory um, sensitivities uh, it was really loud and noisy in the change rooms. It was really overwhelming. It can so be, it yeah. actually it can um, be for adults too. I tell absolutely. You. <laughs> so it actually it stopped them from coming to lessons. Mm -hmm. um, it was just too overwhelming, and it you know it just didn't end well. So we thought that by relaunching um, having a sens sensory adapted class. Um, the parents knew exactly what the pool environment looked like. So okay. during those time slots, uh, when a parent registers their child, they know that it's one-on-one -on -one lessons that are going on in the pool. It's okay. not group lessons, so it's a quieter environment, mm -hmm. not as many people in the change rooms. Um, so it's not as overwhelming. So it makes for a better um, environment for some of those children coming in. Yeah, because I, I know I've seen uh, the instructors are usually fabulous. Or they're not usually they are fabulous yeah. with the kids because there's some children, when the mom has to or the dad has to go upstairs, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. they're left in the in the pool by themselves with an instructor yeah. they're they're not so happy and and yeah there are be a lot pretty of pretty overwhelming challenges for, that yeah. way for mm -hmm. sure um, our instructors are fantastic um, they work alongside with the the parents you know what makes their child more comfortable in the water you know if there's a theme sometimes mm -hmm. we'll tailor those lessons which is ideally what our adapted lessons are for they're that one-on-one -on -one, um, experience so this way again it just allows the parent to know um, when they bring their child that the environment is going to be quieter so that um, we kind of remove one of those challenges so is there an extra cost for that or that's just no nope. part of you just when they, they sign up they know that uh, they're signing up at that time to allow their child to have a little bit more quietness of Exactly. Yeah, no, price stays the same. Um, and it's just, again, it's just about the environment so they know what they're walking into. So it takes some of that stress off the parents when they come in, and it's just That's more good. of a welcoming environment for some of those children. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Back to you, Miranda, mm -hmm. with, with the, the rock. We do have the ability to make snow. Maybe tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, sometimes when we have to make snow and mm -hmm. how we do it and, and what the process is. Yeah. I don't have to get real technical because okay. <laughs> I don't have all of the technical knowledge, but uh, just mm -hmm. give us an overview. Of course. So at the beginning of every season, you know, we're always kind of waiting um, for the temperatures to drop so that we, you know, so we're ready to make snow and, you know, whiten the hill. It's kind of like yeah. a little snow globe over it there is. where we have a coat. But there's quite really a nice. science to There to is, snow yes. Too. So yeah, there's, there's definitely a few things that need to be lined up before we're able to go ahead um, and make snow. So we're definitely wanting a few days of consecutive cold weather. So that looks, you know, anywhere from minus three to minus five. Um, humidity has has to be right. um, at the right level which you know does mm -hmm. change hourly so we have to keep an eye on that and then also wind direction um, so depending on which way the wind is blowing it's going to you know depend where the snow is going to fall um, but new this year we were able to have the guns made into portables so that we can actually move put the, them. Yeah, yeah move them and put the snow exactly where we want it so um, I'm happy to say that I th feel like that's made a really big I difference think that's for us. going to help this mm -hmm. depend on where the, where the wind's blowing you might not be able to put snow down mm -hmm. but it's great snow making conditions so being able to to move the uh, the snow guns and then there's there were some areas that were always a little difficult to to get to to put stuff yeah to put the snow so yeah we're able to kind of you know put the point the gun right at it and, and fill it up you pushing it yourself no <laughs> <laughs> they would have now one that thing that nice. that resident have asked me is about where the water comes from mm -hmm. for for the hills maybe you can explain yeah that. so the water is pumped from the ponds that we have on site so of course if you've ever been to the rock you're driving right by it when you come in and it is a lake fed pond so when we're blowing snow it is all natural we're not putting any chemicals or anything in there um, just you know good old-fashioned water and maybe a little bit of dirt that comes yeah. out here but yeah all uh, the water does come from the reservoir there now tell us how does uh, the rock do some of their uh, communication in terms of social media because people <laughs> often you'll see it on Facebook is is the rock open uh, is is the rink available mm -hmm. so how should people find out about what uh, what's available yeah so um, it's definitely our website which is georginarock.ca that has sort of the fundamental information um, you know that doesn't change but for ongoing information about events or open like openings and closures and information about specific activities we are always on Facebook Twitter and Instagram um, we're trying to show you know showcase what we have going yep. on but we also try to be really responsive as well you know getting back to people so that they know they have all the information they need before they come and visit us the nice thing is there is a web webcam as well so yes. if you want mm -hmm. to sort of check it out you can go on to the uh, 
uh, website mm -hmm. and click on the webcam. It, it doesn't, it's not a continuous feed, it's what every 10 minutes? I, I feel like, yeah, 10, 20 10, minutes it updates a new photo updates, of what's so going. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it refreshes so you can see if it's open, who's sliding down, you can't mm -hmm. see faces, but you can tell if there's people <laughs> yeah. going down the, the hill and you can see what uh, what's happening. Yeah, so what the conditions are a, like, yeah. A, a bird's eye uh, look at things. Mm -hmm. Now one thing uh, we didn't touch on, I know it's winter time, but mm -hmm. the, the challenge course and the rock climbing. Mm -hmm. Maybe give us a little bit of information on, uh, on how that, because be, it'll be spring before we know of it, and, and how do people get involved with, uh, with those two options? Yeah, so we have um, we do drop-in programs. We do at least one Saturday every month. Um, at 1 o'clock, people can come in um, and experience the challenge course. It's usually about $20 per person, um, and that's for people uh, from the ages 6 and up. So you can use, if you're 6 and older, you can use the climbing wall and the low ropes, and if you're 10 and over, you can use the high ropes courses, which, which is the really big element that you can see kind of like from baseline, right. their highlight yeah. experience. You can come and use that in the climbing wall. But it is, um, I like to kind of say, call book climb. So, you know, you can, anybody can give us a call, whether you're a school, community group, you're a family, yep. anybody. A business, give us a if call. you want to do some team building, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you know, have some fun with uh, the family, uh, you know, during March break or an event. So you, you don't have to wait to those those Saturdays to, exactly. to come in. So yeah, you can, just give us a call. We can take a look at what we have going on in the schedule, um, and then we can book you in for a time, whatever. And that. that's the same for the rock climbing wall. Yes, yeah, for all the activities there, yep. Well, that's good okay. because I know uh, a lot of groups uh, are, are using it more and more, and I think mm -hmm. we're, we're getting more uh, people from out of town. We've done uh, social media outreach for mm -hmm. for uh, the Rock to, to get more uh, more people uh, coming out to uh, to that. So, mm -hmm. well, uh, thank you both for uh, for coming out today because I know a lot of people have questions about uh, the pool and certainly the the availability of lessons. If somebody has a concern about uh, lessons not being available or swim times, they can always reach out to, to you as well. And Oh yeah, absolutely. And I always say just put your name on that wait list because mm -hmm. we do monitor them um, daily, especially right, right after new registration. So if we can create more classes, we will. But Perfect. without those names, great. Can't do it. <laughs> well, thank you both for, for coming out today and thank Rocky for me as, as well. <laughs> he had to leave, get back to the hill. Thank you for joining us. I'm Margaret uh, Quirk, Mayor here in the town, and this has been Service Georgina. We hope to see you coming, coming back for our next show. Thank you very much.